Thank you for all that you all do. Uh, thanks for your involvement with the Center for Women in Business, uh, who, by the way, bought your breakfast this morning, so thank you for helping us get a good start. Uh, welcome to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We're all thrilled that you're here, and you know this is an organization that, that really tries and, and endeavors and, and does represent the full breadth and scope of American business, from our largest Fortune 500 companies uh, to the smallest uh, startups and everything in between. And we're thrilled that you're here, and I hope that you all uh, may have your appetites uh, uh, stimulated for involvement with this great uh, organization that's about to celebrate its 100th anniversary. That's some important uh, staying power for sure. Uh, for the women entrepreneurs that are with us today uh, that Denise spoke of, we are really encouraged by this new center and what it can bring with respect to resources and networking and, and education uh, to women business owners here uh, in, in our nation's capital, uh, representing them and all around the country. It's never been more important to reinforce each other in these uh, difficult economic times. And what I was struck by Arell's uh, remarks are that uh, entrepreneurs want to help each other. And that's why you all are here. He told the story about his about making the phone call, the one phone call that became the, the successful business partnership, et cetera. And I know in my time uh, after public service, uh, I, I've really discovered that folks really want to be helpful to each other. Yes, we're competitors, but we're also uh, facilitators, uh, kindred spirits, and all of that. We as a nation, I think, really, really need to remember, especially now, that the answers to our economic crisis, to our woes, the problems facing our nation, our communities, our families, don't lie in the government. They lie within ourselves. They lie in the face of American business. They lie in our entrepreneurial spirit, our desire to dream big, that can-do attitude that has always really stood us apart from others around the world. Though that risk-taking pioneer spirit uh, that allows us to achieve our dreams. Fortunately, we have good reason to believe that that, that spirit uh, is alive and well in our country, notwithstanding what you might uh, hear or feel uh, or, or uh, get from the media. But I think our young people really do get that this is what's going to make uh, a difference in their lives. The National Chamber Foundation, which is part of our uh, forum for policy innovation around here, uh, partnered recently with the Junior Achievement Organization to do a survey about uh, what our young people actually think about them, what, what we need to be doing with respect to educating them. So we conducted a national survey of high school students uh, this past summer. The findings of the survey were encouraging on two levels. First, we found that high school juniors understand that entrepreneurs play the key role in driving our country forward. That means our nation's teenagers have a sophisticated understanding of how uh, innovation happens. Obviously, uh, many of them are the sons and daughters of, of entrepreneurs and small business people themselves, and they get that we need that energy to drive prosperity. But even better news, I think, is the fact that 64% of these young people are interested in starting their own businesses. They're interested in being those entrepreneurs. They get that especially now, the way, the route to the American dream is within themselves and within their own creativity, within their innovation, and within their own hard work. Uh, even more impressive than that, many of them have already started business ventures, as simple as lawn services or daycare. Young people are taking steps to meet their own financial needs. This demonstrated initiative will serve them well as they continue their educations and enter the workforce and begin their businesses. But the fact that some of them are already taking active ownership of their futures also reflects the anxiety that I think young people feel about financing of education and about their futures. It's telling that high school students, many of them four or five years out of entering the job market, are concerned about whether there will be work for them when they graduate. They have a lot of skepticism and anxiety about what the economy is going to hold. The survey showed that nearly 90% 
are very worried about their future prospects in this economy. So it's no wonder that they're looking to themselves and the value of entrepreneurship to find the way. Students recognize that that entrepreneurial spirit is what they can surely rely on. As everyone in this room knows, entrepreneurs take ideas and put them into action, and the result is meeting the needs of customers, creating jobs for Americans in new, inventive, and innovative ways. So we need to help guide today's students down the educational and career path that will help them succeed. At the Chamber, we've worked to foster a spirit of entrepreneurship in America and through our students through several education and outreach programs. Starting at the high school level, we're partnering with local chambers and schools to offer the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, or YAY. This year-long after-school program allows students to start and run real businesses. And we're not just talking about lemonade stands, uh, we're talking about real sophisticated businesses. We've seen participants launch ambitious efforts to teach English as a second language, a public service campaign to combat texting and driving among their peers, fitness DVDs geared towards teens, and many, many more. More than 300 students have continued their businesses after completing this program. Either way, they're getting valuable real-world experience that we hope will both inspire and empower them to be our future business leaders. At the college level, the Chamber has supported uh, Michael Simmons and Arell and the Extreme Entrepreneurship Tour at college campuses all over this country. More than 6,000 students have participated in nearly 100 events this year, exposing them to the ideas of entrepreneurship and free enterprise. The Chamber is also working with students in free enterprise, or SIFE. Through the SIFE program, students work with businesses and academic leaders and their local chambers to apply free enterprise solutions to community challenges here and all over the world. The motto of SIFE is, a head for business, a heart for the world. And I think that really sums up the power of entrepreneurship. In addition to my work here, as Denise said, uh, I also serve as an advisory member of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Initiative, a $500 million philanthropic investment by the Goldman Sachs Foundation to help small businesses create jobs and economic opportunity. This program provides existing small business owners that have passed the startup phase with business education, financial capital, and support services to grow their businesses. It's implemented locally by community colleges and community development financial institutions, or CDFIs, and we're currently operating in six cities, Chicago, Long Beach, Los Angeles, New Orleans, New York, and my favorite, my hometown of Houston, Texas, and Zach Hodges is here from Houston Community College where one of these programs is operating. See Zach if you want to know more. The program is serving the diversity of American small business with a large percentage of participants being women and minority owned business owners. By year end, more than 500 businesses will have benefited from this program in just uh, under two years and significant job growth has already occurred. Given my background in education, I'm thrilled that this program is working with our local community colleges to expand their capacity to serve small business owners. Community colleges already work closely with the population that this program aims to serve, so it's a natural fit for them. The curriculum was created in partnership with leading entrepreneurial experts from Babson College, my friend Patty Green, I think is here with us today. Patty, are you here yet? She'll be with you later today. Uh, as an advisory council member, I've been energized by the small business owners and entrepreneurs that I've met in this program. And just like all of you when, you, when you get down and you talk to your colleagues, fellow business owners, it's really inspiring and, and keeps you going. New ideas, good intentions, and fresh innovations all need enterprise to give them life, to make them work. The individuals and enterprises and the work and ideas that we're highlighting at this summit give me great confidence that you'll get some of that motivation today when you go back to your own business. Today, the business community faces tremendous challenges, but also tremendous opportunities. 
We look forward to getting your insights to some of America, from some of America's great entrepreneurs so we, the Chamber can meet your needs in more effective ways. It promises to be an invigorating and an instructive discussion, and we appreciate very much your participation. Thank you again, and welcome to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce.